singing. 439, now 439. May not be Thanksgiving, but there is so much to be thankful for. Count your blessings. 439. 
Rules and punishments over here. sober and, and stay sober. You got 50 people in here tonight praying for you, Julie. And we love you. Can't disturb the service. I know. That's why you have to come in every church service. We'll get sober. Now, is there anybody that does stuff that embarrass anybody? Well, I'm in the prison. Let's be thankful for Jimmy. They're around here everywhere. Come back the next time, said Jimmy. You can't interrupt the service. Next time you say something, you're going to go out, right? Where are we? The third row? Listen. I guess it's a city for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he wants this talk. No. Yeah. No. Yes. Ooh. Hey, make more to buy it. Are you scrub? The what? Sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> some other sin, and Lord, we certainly don't want to throw any stones at anybody tonight that's uh, struggling with, with temptation and the submission to temptation. And help Jim to know there are people here that love him and care for him, and here Friday night to help him, and here Sunday night, <coughs> Wednesday night, Sunday morning. And again, we pray for the multitudes tonight that have been defeated by uh, circumstances and things and people worry. Help us tonight to have our joy restored to full fullness as we sing more songs and as we open the scripture again that we might find the uh, hope, the help, the direction we need to finish the course that you put us on here. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue to sing. 336. 336 now. 336. That's the way of life. 336.
than in any large city in North America. Left our home at 7 in order to be able to arrive at their home by 9. We arrived at right on time from 9 a.m. to noon. We talked and shared the Word of God with them. Amen. It goes on to say that about 3.45, we finished answering questions, had prayer, and left. Got back home at 6 p.m. That involved the whole day of following up on just one contact, so we'll be busy all year, of course. So if you would, Brother Bodie, lead us in prayer for these three dear missionaries. And thank you for those of you who do give to missions. Remember, your offering to missions has to be in an envelope. We're thankful for uh, the support that we can send out and help. I uh, can't wait any longer to rejoice in what is listed in the bulletin concerning our own Brother Barnes, who, who's out in uh, Denver, Colorado tonight. He's at a church planting conference out there. He didn't know anybody there personally. He knew some other preachers in the general area, but he showed up there like 70-some uh, other preachers that are starting churches showed up. They, uh, I don't know how they determine which one gets up, and they get three, two to three minutes to tell about their ministry. He was uh, chosen as number three because he was there Sunday, got to meet the pastor, and they went out to lunch together. Of course, the pastor treated him, and he got the third option, the third spot, and they raised $2,600 for him. Amen. Right there, the first night of this conference, Latin, it was last night, Tuesday night. And so... Again, uh, let's rejoice that God is providing. We need about $6,000 for the startup cost of this church uh, in May 18th. It's coming up quickly. We are hosting a lunch here on Friday. We have 13 pastors, counting us, involved at this point. Others may just show up that forgot to call. Uh, but that's uh, uh, another way to inform these pastors of exactly what the, the, the costs are. And this 2600 will go... Uh, that's almost a third of what the goal is to raise uh, in the next few weeks to try to uh, rent the Holiday Inn where we'll have services in the Holiday Inn and get all these John and Romans out. Remember, we're going to collate John and Romans starting Friday afternoon at 2.30. We're going to wait till school's out to start. If you can come by or if you junior high and senior high students can stay on after school's out, we sure be glad to have your help. They will be here to show us how to do that starting at 2.30 till 6. We'll take a supper break and start again at 7 o'clock. We want all the RU people here, if you could, to help us and I'll make it go real quickly, uh, please. Brother Barnes and uh, uh, the man that's coordinating all this uh, will get in late tomorrow night, actually early Friday morning, uh, to coordinate all of this. So let's pray that again. As we think of these missionaries, we're sending money outward, but here we have one right local that we want to do our best. As midwives, doctors and nurses are important to give birth to physical children. We in this church family, we are the midwives, the doctors and nurses to assist in birthing the State Line Baptist Church of Portsmouth, Kittery, uh, just uh, 45 but 60 minutes north of us. Brother Cody Lee just says we pray if you would please. Back to this real quick. What happened in China with the raise? What was packed? Was it an event? Some kind of an event? Christmas so party. <laughs> 225 showed yeah. up. Uh, Largest crowd they ever had wow. for the Christmas party. And uh, that's Pow. P is in perpendicular, right? Pow is the guy's name. What? Cat, cat, K O. K O. Wait, P. Spell P A O. P A O. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in thanks, Lord, for gathering us and and <clears throat> about uh, these requests we're going to pray for right now, Lord. We uh, know you hear us, and um, we ask you to uh, please keep us uh, mindful of. Uh, our sins that we'll confess them so that we'll have a uh, Holy Spirit will have free course in our prayers, Lord. We uh, think of the uh, Buna and Tai Ha's uh, family and their ministry out there in Cambodia, Lord. We're grateful for the <coughs> baptism, Lord, and actually the, the conversion of Peo, Lord, as well as the baptism, Lord. <clears throat> we're rejoicing in that. Uh, we pray that you'll keep these works up over there, Lord. Keep getting people saved. And we pray for the parents, Lord, that they will... Um, not be hard on them. As a matter of fact, Lord, we pray that they will be curious and that they will get saved. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the Williams in Spain, how thankful we are for the church that they've already um, put a national in charge of, Lord. And uh, uh, we're praying for that church to grow. Now, we ask for this money to come in for the new building, Lord, for this uh, a new work that Bill and Teresa are doing, Lord. We thank you for them. Bless them. And uh, please bring the money in 
And in Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and for the rays of China, how thankful we are that they're out there, Lord. Keep them protected from um, any anything, Lord, that can go on over there. It's a strange country, Lord. And instead, Lord, may they continue to grow. We're thankful for the, uh, the Christmas um, gathering, Lord, with 25. Lord, we pray that... Uh, that there'll be much bounty from that, much fruit, more people being saved. Lord, we're thankful for the three-hour Bible study that they had. And so, Lord, may that abound, too. May the word of mouth um, uh, continue to flow and, and more people be saved and more people gathering. And, and in the uh, church that you um, put Brother Ray in charge and other churches, uh, all the other ones in China as well, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for the John and Rome uh, Coalition and and uh, work that we're going to do, Lord, may you bless that. Please put your hand on it, Lord, and, and get many people interested to, to come and help, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're back in Philippians chapter 1 tonight. We want to look at a, especially one verse concerning prayer. We, talk, we call this Bible study and prayer night. We like to do both, study the Bible. That helps us to pray better. We like to pray better. That helps us to work better. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 mentions, And this I pray, this is the Apostle Paul, remember he's in prison, writing a letter to encourage other believers. As we said Sunday, remember there are at least four thieves that rob us of our joy. And if we, love, if we lose our joy, we lose our faith to pray, and so many other things go down when we lose joy. Right. Discontent sets in sometimes, discouragement, depression. Anxiety, which leads to worship. Sometimes it's circumstances that rob us of our joy. Uh, we, most of us would agree that we're usually happier when things go our way, but things don't always go our way, right? Um, if they go our way, we'd have a, about 72 degrees. We'd have all this snow and ice melting. There's nothing as beautiful as freshly fallen snow, but I'm convinced there's nothing as ugly as what we see along the side of the roads now. It's yeah. not white and it's not black. It's just a combination of uh, the yuckies that Brother Barnes would call it, I guess. So we've got to be thankful, though, for the yuckies. It's going to melt. It's going to get up to 40-something this weekend. So uh, uh, be prepared for sun sunstrokes. Uh, get your sunglasses out, your suntan lotion. People sometimes cause us to lose our joy, sad to say. People. If everybody was perfect like uh, you and I are, there'd be no problem. But That's the problem right. is that people haven't been enlightened like we have and haven't been perfected right. yet. And, of course, we're still working on it, by the way, especially for our guests and visitors here. We haven't quite reached it yet. And as I said earlier, God help us not to look down on that uh, dear man that walked in here. He claims he's a right. saved man, and you can be saved and still not have victory. I, I guess we'd all agree to that, right? Yes, sir. Amen. And it's not a one of us in here that couldn't be in that same shape in uh, 24 hours or less. I don't know how long it would take to get in that shape. Any of you want to tell us? <laughs> Wait and tell us later. <laughs> how, how long would it take or how many of those things called six, uh, come in a six-pack? Things. Sometimes things can cause us to lose our joy. Things can cause us to lose our joy. And here tonight, verse 9, this I pray that your love, we're talking about love tonight, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And we need biblical knowledge in order to have biblical discernment. That's what judgment is, biblical discernment. We don't judge anybody. We don't say, hey, there's a lost man. He's going to go straight to hell. Oh, no, he may be a saved man, and he just needs the strength to right. step from carnality to fleshly giving into the flesh and becoming spirit-filled. And that's the goal for all of us. We need to be spirit-filled if we expect to get rewards uh, and get the gold that uh, God's going to be distributing. Amen. The mansions he's given out, uh, the rewards he's giving out for faithful obedience. So thank you for coming tonight. Paul here is trying to help us see that regardless of his circumstances, the people, the things, the worry that he could have been living under, that he had the victory over them. Fellowship. It is uh, one of the main things. Uh, look at verse 3 here. We see, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. What a testimony. Can we do that about people we remember? Always in every prayer of mine. For you all making requests with joy. There's the word again, prayer. We're thinking about prayer tonight. For your fellowship in the gospel. That has to do with participation. 
contribution, uh, effort to work together in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul went into this uh, town of Philippi. He met a few ladies down by the river worshiping and established a church. And we got a nice river up here in Portsmouth, the Kittery Main. I mean, that's beautiful. If you've never, anybody ever been to Portsmouth, the uh, Kittery Main? I love going across that bridge into Maine. Um, maybe I could uh, drive the bus uh, uh, to go over there and pick up some soldiers. There's a big uh, Navy base over there that uh, we're praying that they're going to come across the river and, and want to be fed and challenged uh, by the preaching of the gospel. And, and we as a, a body of believers, we want to get excited about the, partici the participation, the contribution that we can have in reaching out beyond our walls here and seeing another church established. It's a miracle of God's grace. Look at verse 6. Here's a wonderful, again, promise about our assurance of salvation. Our confidence. Paul was confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God doesn't save us and then kick us out of the family. He doesn't adopt us in and then kick us out. If we treated people like that here on the earth, we can understand that. But usually if you adopt somebody, you keep them uh, uh, for life. It's a lifetime relationship, and so is salvation. It's a lifetime relationship. I have you in remembrance. Fellowship simply means to have in common joint participation, association, communion, or even the word intimacy would come in play here. And that's the kind of of a relationship we have, that these are the things that increase our joy. Thanking God. We had, Paul had here reflections of their godly conduct, and he was thanking God in, in this, initially for this. And then he makes the request in verse 4, sending petitions heavenward for the saints at Philippi, joyfully because of their holy walk. And then this Fellowship is talked about there again in verse 5 where they labor together. Without doubt there was consistency in their fellowship of the gospel. Participating, associating, and communing in the word of God that Paul had delivered unto them from the first day until now. And then think about this little formula. If you don't have this written down or memorized in your mind, this uh, three-point formula that uh, is, is referred to here in verse 6, it's the work of God that, that he does for us. It's called redemption. That's where it all starts, redemption. That's a synonym for salvation. That's what God does for us. We can't save ourselves. He saves us. So remember, redemption is the work that God does for us. Now, the work that God does in us is called sanctification. That's the growth process. That's the getting rid of the sins and letting the Holy Spirit fill us. That's called the work that God does in us. So redemption, God does it for us. Sanctification, God does it in us. And then the work that God does through us is called, it starts with an S, can anybody help me? S-E-R, service. The work that we do, that God does through us is called service. So we have this threefold formula here in verse 6 that what God does for us, he saves our soul, that's redemption. What God does in and through us, that's the growth process, the sanctification. And that work that God does through us is called service. And again, we want to be reminded tonight that if we're not looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, we get our focus off of God and Christ and we get it on each other. We get it on circumstances or things and that's when worry sets in and drains us of the blessing and the joy that God wants us to have. We will need to be refreshed and be rejoyed in order to rejoice evermore. And the question is, well, how are you doing on a Wednesday night? You're doing well enough to get in here, but the question is, are we going to be well enough to make it through Friday, Saturday, and the rest of this week, and of course be back on Sunday, uh, or Friday night here, Friday afternoon and Friday night. <coughs> Point number two here. Paul says, I have you in remembrance. Point number two, verse seven. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. I have you in my heart. Oh, what a joy it is to know that people have us in their heart. People that uh, pray for us. Paul here has these Philippi uh, Philippian believers in his heart. 
in so much in as much as both in my bonds he's in prison and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel ye all are partakers of my grace what a testimony to have somebody else in your heart Paul loved their fellowship in the guard room they cared for Paul in prison in the gospel the church of Philippi stood with Paul possibly at his defense before Nero and showed him all the attention which they could they have even sent members to sympathize with him brought him this offering that we'll see uh, later on in chapter 2 uh, sent him money and, and uh, gifts to of course comfort him in his prison in grace he was partakers of my grace literally co-shares of his grace prompted to alleviate this, his imprisonment to cooperate with him and defending and propagating the gospel to suffer for its sake. Remember, we already looked at that verse, that, uh, the last two verses of, of chapter 1, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, that's the easy part, that's the faith part, but also to suffer for his sake. And Paul's in a position that he is suffering for the cause of Christ, but he's not broken, he's not discouraged, he's not filled with sin uh, that uh, so easily can betake us when Things seem to fall apart. I have you in my heart, he said. Paul loved them fervently, verse 8. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the vows of Jesus Christ. That means the interior part of something. He had these dear believers in his heart. And God was Paul's witness to his love for those at Philippi. Paul did not just speak, but had support to what he said. Your welfare, he says. His desire for them was an honest one. He cared for their needs. Sunday school teachers, we need to be thinking about those that are absent. What are they going through? What difficulties are their family putting on them? When they start talking about getting seriously involved in the work of the Lord or getting baptized, like uh, we mentioned here, Pale, his family um, didn't like the fact that he was moving away from worshiping their family idols. Your family won't like it either unless they understand the truth or give you great liberty. They're going to put some negativity into your mind and heart. You need to be strong enough to lovingly get through that. Don't respond in anger and bitterness. Remember, uh, the unsaved mind can't begin to comprehend the gospel. The, the preaching of the cross to the lost man, to the natural man, is foolishness. Right. And so we need to expect that when we go out into the world. Try to convince them that they can be saved and go to heaven. They uh, look at you like you've got two heads sometimes, or they uh, do just the opposite, ignore you totally. But I hear Caitlin uh, has a 100% response. Nobody refuses gospel tracts from Caitlin. <laughs> she's so beautiful and knows how to smile. And uh, everybody loves to get gospel tracts from children. So they were out last night in this sub uh, freezing weather, below the freezing weather. Thank you for your show of faith. Brother Cormier was preaching in the open air. Hey. We're getting uh, loosened up for the summertime that's on the way. Um, it softened hard, so I had more uh, soft responses than I've had in quite a while. So thank you for your faith, Amen. Brother Cormier and others who were out with us uh, uh, getting the gospel out. Uh, we, we want to have fellowship in the gospel and work together to the, uh, to the cause of Christ here that Paul's reminding these Philippians about and encouraging us tonight. And the third point, I have you in my prayers. He says, I have you in remembrance, I have you in my heart, I have you in my prayers, verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound, yet more and more knowledge and in all judgment. Why would we want our knowledge to abound in judgment and in knowledge? That you may approve, verse 10 says, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ. What a challenging fault that is. That's why we want to pray tonight for, for knowledge and judgment so that we can approve things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. And the sentence doesn't end there. Remember, here it is, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But I would that you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. May God help us to see 
the kind of biblical love that God has available for those of us who are in them in the in this Christian life in this uh, church relationship process of, of nurturing other believers and at the same time reaching out to new believers that, that need to have somebody love them and draw them to the gospel and see them born into God's family and then be strong enough as a church to reproduce another church for God's glory as somebody yeah. had the faith to to encourage us along the way. I was just uh, rehearsing with my wife recently how the church that sent us out here 40 years ago, and this was uh, 40 years ago where $40 was a lot of money. Uh, I would think at least 10 times uh, the, the value of the dollar has increased. Our apartment we rented was like $175 there on Spring Street. That was a five and a half room. I assume that same apartment now would rent for uh, over $1,200. 13 or 14 maybe. But anyway, they sent us $40, a smaller church than this one, $40 a week for the first uh, year or two at least to keep us uh, going out with the gospel. Many other churches and families help support us and keep us here on the field that I didn't have to take uh, full-time employment or even part-time employment. I had a full-time challenge ahead of me. That was to share the gospel with everybody I possibly could. I learned in selling World Book Encyclopedias that if you didn't talk to people, you weren't going to have anything to eat that week. Mm. That's when I was uh, feeding my wife and Cher and Scott was born there. We were living in Chicago. And they were teaching me how to sell. And again, the first uh, point in sales is if you leave enough cards around, somebody will call back because they're looking for a set of encyclopedias. Mm. But it's a pretty... Uh, it's a big step of faith to expect how many cards would you have to leave before somebody would call and say, yeah, I want to buy a set of your encyclopedias. <laughs> Second thing I, they taught us to do, if you do knock on the door and give somebody a card, you might say, I found the World Book Encyclopedia very helpful uh, in the study. And again, this was 45 years ago almost. Uh, and then the best thing to do is to show them the product. We need to show people the product of salvation. Amen. And then to ask them, this is the question. Would you like the, uh, the hard cover or the soft cover? Would you like the $10 a, a month plan or would you like to pay it all in full tonight? You have to ask for the sale. And so if we're going to win people to Christ, we've got to present the product, we've got to show them that it works in our life, give our testimony, and then expect them to want what we have. No. We have to ask for the sale. No. We have to say, uh, would you like to pray the prayer? with me right now, or would you want to take it home and pray it in private? And I don't give that option right up front because it's so easy for them to put it off and not do it later. So right. we want to give people the option after we present the gospel, after they hear this brother preach for uh, 10 minutes and sing for 10 minutes, we want to, if they're standing there watching him, we want to say, did that make sense to you? And if you're ready to admit that you're a sinner, you're on the way to hell, Tonight would be the night to just simply pray that prayer of salvation. Amen. Ask God to forgive all your sins and that, ask him to come live in your heart. That's what I did huh, 50 years ago, and, and it really changed my life for the better. Yeah. You're adding your testimony into the sales presentation. Again, we're not selling anything. It's harder to get people saved than it is to sell them a set of encyclopedias, actually, because they can't believe it's already paid for. Right. It would be like me trying to... Anybody want to set, nobody wants encyclopedias now. So computer. We got it all right here, right? We just know how to put the right numbers. We can get any answer we want, right? Some of you put in here. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take me, whether I'm going to have enough life left to figure out how this whole thing works or not. Some of you have figured it out because you grew up in a different generation. Paul says, I have you in my prayers. Do you have anybody in your prayers tonight? Are, are we so self-centered, all we're praying about is our own wants or needs and we all have needs and beyond that we have wants but Paul here is reaching out showing us by his example that even in prison he was concerned about the furtherance of the gospel verse 13 so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So each one of us can encourage somebody else by our acts of boldness if we really work at it and pray about it. Right. Love abound toward God. Abound may keep on overflowing. A perpetual flood of love. Yet more and more, 
Love abound towards one another. Love abound toward absent Christians. Love abound towards the unsaved. In knowledge, we're talking about. In judgment, that means intelligently. Love that has its base in the Word of God. It's not blind love, rather based upon an enlarged view of divine principle. In judgment means the power of discerning that he wished that their love should be exercised with proper discrimination, proper love values, mature character. The word sincere means tested by sunlight. Christian sincerity is implying there that one is truly converted, not assuming Christianity as a mask, but that one's motives are disinterested and pure, that one's conduct is free from double-dealing, trick, and cunning, that one's words, of course, express the real sentiments of his heart and express that to those near and far. One is true to his word and faithful to his promise. That one is always what he professes to be. A sincere Christian would bear to have the light shine upon his life everywhere and at all times. He also will have a negative virtue that of without offense, not injuring others in their property, their feelings, or in their reputation. May the Lord help us tonight as we endeavor to pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment. With this last thought in mind as I'll develop this theme a little more on Sunday, the Lord willing, and that is, how do we define the biblical love that's mentioned here? If you move down to chapter 2, we talk that we see the word love there in verse, oh, verse 1 and 2. The thought, if there be there for any consolation, any comfort here in chapter 2, verse 1. If you need some consoling tonight, some comforting, if any comfort of love, that's the agape, that's the highest level of godly love that is used in the Bible. There's at least uh, three different Greek words that are used for the English word love that we use so easily. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, Paul saying, having the same love. There it is again, that highest level of godly love, being of one accord, of one mind. This agape love is a godly love where the object of that love is precious to the one who is loving. The love that God is talking about here, for God so loved the world, that kind of agape or godly love where the object of that love is precious to the one who's being loved. Each of you tonight, each of us tonight is very precious to God. He expressed that love by sending Jesus down here for us. That's how precious we are to him. It's an everlasting love. What is the characteristics of godly love? It's everlasting. It doesn't change. It's unconditional. It's not based on how we respond. It's based on his unconditional love for us. And, of course, number three, it's sacrificial. It's sacrificial. A desire to meet the needs of another without expecting anything in return is this kind of godly love that Paul is praying for these Philippian believers. And as we as church members tonight, as we pray for these 22 missionaries that we're helping to send around the world, that we would pray for each other these Sunday school teachers, uh, these bus workers, this man that uh, uh, worked uh, this afternoon to get the, the, the uh, idler pulley back on the white bus. Uh, thank you, Mark, for your faith to, to want to come and volunteer your time and help us get that bus back on the road. We got the pulley on, but we didn't get the, the bell on yet, so we're praying for warmer weather and the right uh, tools, the right expertise to help us get that bus on the road by by Sunday. Brother Frank uh, Sheehan is still a little bit under the weather, so let's pray for him. He wants to express his love, but he's uh, hurting physically in ways that uh, he's not his full physical capacity. The highest level of love, it's everlasting, it's unconditional, it's sacrificial. Paul's praying that these Philippian believers would have that same kind of love. <coughs> your pastor is praying for you as your Sunday school teachers, your deacons here are praying for you to have that kind of love. That will help restore our joy and eliminate the worry that Satan would like to bear us down under the load of worry and care and concern about this life or cause us to, to stoop to the next level of love, which is only a love that comes from a sense of pleasure that one being loved furnishes. 
So if I love you for only what I can get out of you, that's the, the next level, lowest level. That's not the lowest level, but it's a, under the highest level. We don't want to settle for that level of love. So, and you young ladies, uh, you don't settle for the kind of love that a guy says uh, he loves you and then wants to take that from you, which is not his to take right. until he marries you and you have the full blessing of your father and mother on your life. That's happening every night of the year in our society where people are saying the word love, but they're not backing it up in the kind of godly biblical love that has guidelines and standards of holiness and purity that God's people need to maintain. And yes, they're going to offer you a, a Budweiser, but it'll make you a Bud stupider if you take it and drink it. So don't get near it. Somebody's going to offer you one of those, and you're going to think that you'll be in the in crowd and you can just puff up clouds of smoke. But don't get near it. It may kill you prematurely if you drink, smoke enough of them or drink enough of them and, and give enough. God help us not to give away the standards of true biblical love. Fulfill ye my joy, Paul says, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord with one mind. Lord, help us tonight to be abounding in this love, to grow. We know we'll never reach perfection here on this earth, but may it be our goal to sin less and to love more, to have a godly kind of love that we can be motivated to not let people, circumstances, things, or even worry hold us back from doing the kind of work you want us to do, just as you did 2,000 years ago, sitting in a prison, writing a letter to encourage believers. May we tonight be encouragement to one another as we wait your return and as we endeavor to do what you call us to do. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your songbook. You want to sing with us again? We'll sing and close. We'll have a total time of prayer and be on our way. Anybody's free to drive Mark to the bus station? Yeah, I'll take them. Thank you. Just three people. 236, 236. 236. No, not one. Hey. Hey, let's all stand as we sing. 
see Josiah go by and give his dad a hug um, pat on the back as he was preaching. Would you do that so everybody can see what you did last night? <laughs> Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that we uh, have a place that we can come and hear your word preached. Yeah. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit protection and, and uh, teaching on us, Lord. And we just ask, Father, that you would continue to bless this church and continue to grow it. Lord, we uh, pray for this offering that you would bless it and spread it and accept it. In uh, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Joe Millette needs a ride to the doctors tomorrow. If anybody can help him, a ride from Stoneham to Chelsea to the doctor. He's desperate for a ride. Please pray for Joe. He's made a little progress. He needs to make a little more. But if you can help him, let me know that tonight, please. Dan DeAmbrosio called in. There's sickness at his house. Uh, everybody but Amy and the baby, I think, is still struggling with some kind of a sickness. So let's pray for Dan and Amy, or at least Dan tonight and them. Fine. That's a new baby. They're planning to have baby dedication on Sunday, so that'll be special. They're gonna bring the baby Sunday for baby dedication. That's Dan and Amy, the Ambrosios. Uh, if you would this Sunday, please. Okay, something else heavy on your mind just before we go. Yes. saved up before you go, so let me encourage you, save up some as best you can, teenagers. Uh, say, well, I can't get a job. Get some candy. Sell candy, sell stationery, um, sell encyclopedias, so <laughs> or rain, what do you think? Uh, safe journeys tomorrow and Monday. I'll be uh, going up to Vermont. We get my mail tomorrow. Okay. Yes, Steve. The great for uh, President Obama and your name and how did you hear about the church tonight? Oh, my name is Melinda Brown and I lived in the uh, Old Medford High School since uh, 2001. <laughs> um, I've always known about this church. I was raised in it, in the Amazon. And tonight I'm crying because it's so good to be home. And yeah, I'm home. Yeah, believe me, that I'm on this phone without the support you're giving. But tonight I ask for prayers because my family is still divided in continents. 
In this May, we're hoping to unite all the continents that I finished climbing. As Stephanie well knows, we live in the same building. My mother is still in Brazil in the Amazon, where I was raised with the Wicklow translators. And I found my grandfather. He's been in the Medford High School wall all this time. So the roads from that side are uniting again in West Medford at 111 Arlington Street in May. So my children of all these times from the continents are going to come and make performances to bring West Medford that I've always put into privilege. So I'm crying of, of joy. I also worry for the first time I can say that. Help my mom come home. Yes, amen. Thanks for coming tonight. God bless you. Let's be praying for that to happen. Yes, Cindy. And then if you could just uh, keep that in the prayer that you carry out his prayer for others. Okay. These are very important prayer requests. You should have the bullets. If not, there's the extras back there. Brother Cody has the extras. They're all distributed. So again, let's pray through the list. Uh, let's greet each other. Try not to rush off except Mark, who's, uh, like I say, been freezing all afternoon. Yeah, if we can get him a ride, we can pray maybe as you go. Come back and pray with us.